This company's never been more profitable. You mean hugely profitable? I like it. Dayporter.com presents The Profitable Cleaner, a podcast on commercial cleaning sales and entrepreneurship. The one podcast that's not afraid to discuss real sales strategies with real cleaning professionals that produce real profits and real results. All right, welcome to The Profitable Cleaner. This is a what you would consider an impromptu um podcast we've been having some things in our in our heart that we want to share with you guys we don't have a guest today uh the guest is us we are officially our guest james harper welcome to the podcast man how are you i'm good man thanks for having me on <laughs> <laughs> there you go no uh, we have a few things so one for those that have been asking we have a few announcements about our event that is coming up that is september 12th to the 14th in denver colorado Right now, uh, we have a topic we want to really talk about with you guys right now. But what we're going to be sharing here in a little bit is going to be hotel venues, event venue. We're going to talk about our structure, why we created what we created, and how we're going to go beyond what we created in the past and how we're going to go double, right? How we're going to get bigger, better than we did last time. But before we do that, there's been um we've had some a lot of guests recently in the podcast that keep talking about this and one of the quotes uh, uh stuck with us and James I'll let you kind of kick off this topic before we uh we go into these these uh surprise about the new event that we have coming up. Yeah, absolutely. So one theme Angel and I were talking like what's been heavy on our heart here recently and there's like this common theme and basically it comes down to your commercial cleaning company will never outgrow you. Your success will never outgrow you. Your business will never outgrow you. And that's resonated with us from a few different guests like Nicholas, who we had on the show, um, and just guests prior that speak the same sentiment, talking about we always look for success before we actually do the work and the behavior. And it's actually the reverse psychology uh, success follows behavior. And so often we'll say, if we achieve this or my business does this, then I'm set, then I can hit the next level. Then I can catapult into the new version of me when really it's opposite. We have to create that new version within and then the business, the team, the money, that the success, the happiness that all follows you. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously like your business can grow uh, your business can grow. Like a lot of people listening to this are probably like, well, definitely outgrew me, right? Like I have a hundred employees. I have 50 employees, 200 employees. I feel like it definitely outgrew me. I actually think that's kind of like an illusion, uh, which is interesting. Hmm. We think that it outgrew us, but that's just the illusion because that's one way to keep a scoreboard, right? So it makes you wonder, like if you built a hundred person team, a $2 million commercial cleaning company with who you are right now, Imagine if who you are right now were to improve, right? Imagine you were firing on off in all cylinders. Then what would that company, that venture that you're leading from the front, what would that look like? It's so funny. One of the things with our team members that, that we talk about, right? Uh, recently, we've on gone, uh, some people got a promotion. And then I ask them, cool, what are you learning now? Like, what are some things you're learning? Uh, what? How are you developing yourself? And a lot of friends and even the our employees, they focus on what they're doing there and then, which is fine, right? Like if you're a content creator, get better at being a content creator. If you're a technician, get better at cleaning. For sure, don't devalue your training ground. But you have to put in those extra hours, those extra times, right, into who you're trying to become. Um, right now, I'm reading the book, like Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Vett David. And he has, he says that the number one move is who do you want to be, right? Who do you want to become and where are you right now? And what skills and what do you need to develop to become that person that you want to be? And the reason this, this has been in our hearts recently is I see a lot of posts on social media. We've been talking to a lot of people in the space and we're always like, ah, oh, man, they always say like, oh, I'll invest when? Oh man, I'll go to that conference once my business uh, hits a little bit more profitable. Oh, I'll invest in this new salesperson once I start closing more deals. It's almost like there's always this, once this happens, then I'll decide to put myself first. And it does not work that way in any anything that you do. 
you have to put yourself first. You have to develop yourself, and then、uh, the fruits come from it. You know, absolutely. You mentioned something that I don't want to overlook, and I think we, as individuals, need to define what that is. You talk about the scoreboard. You have a hundred employees. You have two million dollars in revenue. That's one hell of a, an accomplishment. That's if that's your scoreboard, then you have to ask yourself: Are you winning or are you not?、Um, I think there's other ways to view your scoreboard too. You can have a two million dollar company, a hundred employees, and still feel chaos internally. Still feel turmoil when you go home. Still feel like. Anxiety when you wake up out of bed because of that two million dollar company, the hundred employees,、um, and I think you hit it right on the head. If if you are at a certain level now, you have done something to achieve that level of success. When you were at zero, you did something different. You did some sort of behavior. You took some sort of action that led you to where you're at now. Now, if the goal and your desire is for more. And that could be just not more revenue, more employees. It could be more happiness, more peace. Then it, we have to ask ourselves, what's the scoreboard like, and what are we doing within to transform us into that that new new level or higher score?、Um, yeah. So I think that's interesting. You mentioned scoreboard.、Um, well, I mean, I often everything, everything needs to have a scoreboard, right? Even if your personal life. Like, what is the scoreboard that you're that you're going after? You have to have something that you're measuring towards. It doesn't mean that you get married to the result, right? Like, it doesn't mean that if you don't hit that scoreboard and you lose one game, then that you're gonna go into depression. That's not the point, right? But the point is, like, what are you measuring yourself against? Like, what what are you doing to to get to that level, right? Like, it's so a lot of people. Somebody messages,、um, they're like, dude, I love the episode with with Nicholas Barely. Right, they loved it, and they're like, "Yeah," I was like, "Yeah, man, he has a mastermind and all that," and he's like, "How much is a mastermind?" I'm like, "At a minimum, twenty grand." And they're like, "Whoa," right? Like, "Whoa!" Like, why would you? And I'm like, "Dude, I've been investing that for the last two years when I had nothing, not because, not because I was already, not because like once my business hits this, then I'll invest the twenty grand. It's I needed to invest the twenty grand to then get to where my business is at." Right, and I think that's where people are falling short. Again, I see a lot of posts, and and this is not an episode to talk like shit on people or why not. But there has to come a point where you have to look at yourself and say, and look at your business, look at your family. Right, similar to how your business will never outgrow you, your family will never outgrow how you develop you. And、sure. if they do outgrow you, then we're talking about divorce and things of that nature. Because then you're not the man that can provide, or the woman, right, that can build that with the man. So it's it's really interesting、um, conversations. But the reason I wanted to bring that to you guys is because one of you here is listening this, and they haven't made the decision, and they haven't processed the information, and they haven't committed to something. They would rather do the whole like, let's not keep a scoreboard. Let's just do our best every day. We're not measuring ourselves against something. We have no KPIs. We don't know what our goals are. But let's just let's just jog along. And then next thing you know, it's been five years of jogging along. And then you're like, why am I here? Right? We're talking to a prospect. I think like four weeks ago, and they were saying like, I shouldn't be here. I should be somewhere else. And that's how all of us feel. All of us feel like. We should be somewhere that we're not because we're here, right? In order to get yourself to where you feel like you should be, then you have to do things that that person would have done to get you there. And I think that's where we're falling short. A lot of us, right? A lot of us, a lot of us. If I want to reverse my type two diabetes, or if I want to go run a Spartan race, I don't wait till the final week to go run six miles, right? I put on the image of a Spartan prior to. Running a Spartan race, like this, is where we're falling short, and that's exactly why. Like, for when I got married, right? Like, I kept telling Denise, I would call her my wife, and she was like, "Why are you calling me your wife? Right? Why are we talking about things that are more when you get married?" And I'm like, "Because in my mind, I'm already married. In my mind, I'm no longer a fiance or a boyfriend. I'm showing you what it would be like when if I was a husband. Because when that moment hits." I don't have it's a husband, and you better act like it, and we're in it, and no more. People wait till somehow magically something's gonna happen for them to finally take that step. So for anybody listening to this, it's like 
what's that decision? What's that step you got to make? What's that commitment? Also, like, again, business, marriage, fitness, you call it. What what statement do you want to make within not just your business, but your life? And for those of you that don't know, uh, Cleaning Profits 2.0 has a theme. Uh, and Angel, I want you to really speak on the theme, talking about the statement, but creating a statement within you that will translate into your business, that will translate to your team to propel you forward. Because again, you can't have that next level of success without having the behavior, without having a clear statement identified before taking any type of action and feeling any type of reward in terms of success. So I'm curious, man, talk to me about the statement. You kind of were the original one to, to think of the theme and I quickly got behind it. So when you hear the statement, what's that mean to you? And, and what does that mean to others? I mean, I think like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, uh, we're all making statements right now, whether you like it or not. It's such an underrated thing. Once you, once you realize that your life, your life will change. You will transform the way you act. You make a statement in every, think of everything where you have to interact with someone, including how you interact with yourself. And you're making a statement every single day. Have you said you were going to work up to the gym and you don't, and then you don't work out? Have you told your kids? Or your wife, yeah, you know what? We're going to do weekly date nights. And then, oh, you got busy, she got busy, and you didn't enforce that date night. You just made a statement that the relationship is not a priority uh, compared to whatever just ruined that day, right? Everything has a statement, whether you like it or not. The What inspired the, the event for Cleaning Profits 2.0 is that we're going to show people how to make a statement. What is a statement, how to make the statement, and how to live by that statement, right? I have a friend that said, um, what you do, what you do, say, uh, yeah, what you do is so loud that I can't hear what you say, right? Okay. And, I, and every time he says that, he's like, you don't have to say anything. Just by your actions, I can already tell who you are, right? That's why we decided to do the statement. That's why what we're going to talk about is we're going to show you how to make a statement for your company. Of course, we're going to show you how to make a statement for yourself. We're going to show you how to make a statement for your team. We're going to show you how to make a statement within that same community that we're going to be building during those two and a half days. You're going to go back to your business, to your family and to your life. And you're going to you're going to actually be armed with the statements that you made during those two and a half days where you were in state. Right. It's so funny, like the word statement it starts with state. And we always say, like, if you want to make a decision, you always want to be in the correct state, state hmm. of mind, state, whatever you want to call it. You have to be in the right state. The reason most people don't have the statement or something they can follow through uh, when they commit is because they're not in the right state when they make it. Right. Have you ever made a decision when you're emotional, when you have negative emotions? You make all wrong statements. We've all made those wrong statements. Right. But we don't have because we have 100 employees, 500 employees. So many different fires to put out. We never allow ourselves to slow down, focus, and create the statement that we want. And so what we're going to do with this event is we're going to bring everybody together. We're going to focus, slow down, and then we're going to make a statement. I promise you. I wish I could tell you who the speakers were, but I can't. I can't tell you. Not yet. But <clears throat> Not yet. But when you find out, you're going to realize and you're going to see why what's going to happen in that event Hands down, whoever attends is going to be the best, the best event that you attend this year. Hands down. And if not, you let me know and we'll give you back your money if you attend. That being said, let, let's go a little bit into it, man. I know you are, you're about to go into it, so I'll hand it over. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, uh, if we're talking about the statement, I mean, listen, we had to make a statement ourselves. So that's bringing you the best in-person interaction with a plus professionals and just individuals that are going to allow you to level up your game. Um, I mean, listen, the, the math is simple. You're the average of the top five people you spend the most time with and the crowd you run, run in. So if we're talking to you about making a statement, we have to bring a statement for the event. Um, I'd like to talk about, man, just to kind of give people a little bit of insight in here, um, the structure of the event, what style of event, um, are there vendors? Are there no vendors? Is this a speaker fest? 
Uh, why don't we start with structure? So people listening right now, they're like, okay, I can buy into this. Um, but the last thing I want to do is sit in a, a, a random nice event for two days and listen to some speakers, maybe some are good, some are bad. Um, how are people going to get the most out of this event, Angel? Yeah, I mean, I think you mentioned a lot of different things, so I'll tackle a few. One, um, no matter what I say, it doesn't matter if <laughs> they can't buy into an event based on what I say. They got to buy into the event based on where they're at, where they want to go, and if they have made a decision and a move, a commitment, right, uh, to do it. I think one of our mentors always said, like, what's a decision? It means to kill something off, right? So when we talk about statement, I promise you, if you go in there with this shitty negative I, the, uh, mindset that you're like, oh, I hate this side of me that I want to get rid of it. Like, I feel like I'm meant for more. I promise you, I'll help you shed it really fast. That's my commitment to you. But this structure is different. Um, we could do vendors. We've been approached by a lot of consultants that like to do vendors so that we can offset a lot of the costs. We don't do vendors. We don't believe in vendors. We don't like it. We don't like making it an expo. You have BSEAI and you have awesome events like cleaners and cocktails as well, where you have sponsors and expositions and you can talk to vendors. It's good stuff. We're not interested, right? We're bringing what we've learned in our mastermind groups and different events where it's all about you. It's not about me. I have nothing to do with this. James has nothing to do with this. It's not about our team. It's about the transformation that you get when you're there, right? And so what we're going to do is day one, um, basically, uh, we're just going to have open up the event. We have a venue that fits over 200 people. The house also has an outside area. And basically, the first day is going to be an open bar for everybody and food. Uh, we're going to get there. We're going to kick off. We're going to get in the right state to make the right statement. Then we're going to let you guys network. There's, we're expecting about 120 people at a minimum, all, all, all in commercial cleaning, different ranges, and it's going to be exciting. I mean, we're attracting larger companies as well. It's going to be fun. But again, it's it, it's going to be a good time. The first day, it's all about connecting, breaking the ice. When it comes down to day two, I'll tell you this. We only got four speakers. Last time we had more. We only got four keynote speakers that are going to come and talk to you. One of the speakers is going to be on day three. So that speaker and myself and our team are going to be running a workshop for the whole day that I promise you will give you the breakthrough that you need so that you leave that day and take off and take action because that's the most important part. But day two is basically going to be three speakers and then two more surprises for you. Are you ready? So we got three speakers. Great time. We're going to feed you. We're going to have drinks. We're going to have it all. We're adding two things that we didn't have last time. One, we're going to have a panel. We're going to have an experts panel. Super excited to bring that over to you. So three speakers uh, and an experts panel. And what we're also going to do is the best thing you can do is collaborate with others. So what we're doing is we're bringing 10 different roundtable discussions for you guys that you get to choose where you go. I've been to places where they make you go to all of the tables. I'm not interested in that. You know where you want to go and you know what you need when you get there. It's my job and it's James's job and our team's job to help you identify what you need. And then we're going to give you what you want and what you need. And so we're going to have 10 tables. Um, I'll give you a few of the topics. One of them definitely has to happen, keeping your sales pipeline full. We're going to talk about acquiring other companies, right? Growing through acquisition. We're going to talk about succession planning and wealth management, which is such an underrated skill. We're going to talk about recruitment strategies, like legit, just a table only specific for recruiting strategies. Customer retention, improving profitability. Um, this uh, employee development and culture, we're also going to get one for private banking. You'd be surprised. I've, I've noticed, James, a lot of people don't even have lines of credit and they don't even know how to request a relationship yeah. with their banker. That's something definitely needed. Uh, we're going to have James's friend. I'm going to, I'll say this one, uh, Chris Hussey, Army Ranger. Um, he's going to have his own, uh, his own table as well. He's going to be talking about how to make decisions under pressure. So if you just want to hang out with an Army Ranger and, and uh, learn about him and, and how he makes decisions under pressure, because that's when usually when we make the wrong ones, then we'll have a table for that. And then we're also going to have a table for personal health because that's, again, we don't allow ourselves the time to think. And so we're going to have all these 10 tables. You get to choose three. Uh, you're going to be able to get after it. It's going to be a lot of workshop. And here's my promise to y'all that we did is every single speaker that we have, which is a total of four, not one of them, not one is going to stand there and talk. 
because that is the most boring thing you can ask for. I hate that. I don't like it. Every single speaker that has agreed to gone is making a special workshop style uh, talk for you guys so that when you guys finish that conversation, y'all have something to take action and do something about it. I love That's it, man. For you guys. And of course we have workouts, right? We're not going to get into that. For those that went last time, we had one workout. We'll have one workout in the outside area. And uh, yeah, that'll be more fun and definitely optional. Man, I, I will never actually uh, quick quick comment on the workout piece. I think people were initially kind of caught off guard. Like, what's this working out? You know, 6 a.m. Um, our our last event was in November in Colorado. It can get cold. And then the people that showed up, um, I wasn't surprised by it because we, we had some high level CEOs that showed up and it showed the emphasis that they put on health again the emphasis that they have to be the best version of them to have the best version of their business, right? They, we had, uh, we had Jenny from Babco show up like six months pregnant. Was she making a statement? Absolutely. Oh, she was, yeah. she was making a statement to everyone in that room that didn't show up to herself for her health. I mean, just awesome stuff. So it's, it's a, I think it's new to this industry in terms of like being so, so promoted from our end, but uh, it's a core value of ours and it's a core value that everyone should possess because at the end of the day, man, we can talk business, we can talk all that, but your life can change in an instant if you are not healthy. And uh, ultimately that success that we've talked about from a business perspective won't come if uh, you're not the best version of you from a health perspective. So I'm actually super excited for that being a round table topic on how people can get healthy. So you're not just gonna do a workout with us, you're actually gonna get some education on what health means as a lifestyle because it this isn't taught in schools, right? This isn't something that's natural for a lot of us. It's been a journey for me. It's so just crazy, right? Yeah, it's just crazy. Like. So it's, uh, it's something that is learned and we want you to learn that. And again, going back to making that statement, not just in your cleaning company, but in the person you are as you show up in every room you walk into. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. You, you show up fit to a room, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Um, one thing we didn't mention that I'm excited about, we only have nine spots for this, so that's why we probably didn't mention it. We are going to have VIP this time around. We didn't have that last time. For those that are interested, get your ticket now. Like, they're about to fly out. We haven't even done any marketing. We haven't done anything. This is our announcement to you. There's going to be nine more. There's a total of 15. There's nine tickets left as of today in VIP. Okay. This VIP, we're going to, I wish I could tell you who the guest speaker is going to be, but I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is we're going to have one of our mentors, uh, two of our mentors run a private masterclass with private dinner, with private drinks and a private session. No one else can go. It's going to be a late night session from 6 to 9 PM. The second day, everybody else is going to leave by 5 PM second day. And then we're going to have a super intimate room with 15 people and we're going to serve you to our highest, um, highest quality of service. And we're going to take care of you. The conversations that are going to be held inside of that room will be even, will give you a lot more. It will also like, it will just basically stack itself to what we're building. Hey, and not just from different, I'm super excited. Not just from like the people that will be conducting these strategies and, and master like the hosts of the VIP, but think about the other people that are going to be in that room attending. Right. I mean, we started with 15 VIP passes. We're down to nine right now. And like you said, we haven't marketed. I know the people that have signed up for the, the VIP so far and people would pay to get in the room with those people. And these are technically, so now they're your peers. So I, I always think that's interesting. It's not just the people that will be kind of hosting it. It's also the people you're going to be sitting next to that I think a ton of value and connection is going to come from. No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I think it's going to be a great time. We have our hotel. There's 50, there's 50 rooms already inside of that link. We'll put the link here in the show notes. Really creative hotel, uh, I believe. And we have it, and you'll see it here promoting, but it's called Viv Denver. Um, you'll have that. There's also a Hotel Indigo right around the corner. We do have our special discount with Viv Denver right now. And uh, our event venue, Upper Ladder, super exciting, man. Um, great, great people. Um, they can. We have an outside area and an indoor area, and they can edit everything. 
we're gonna go so attention to detail and we're gonna focus so much on you that even little things like for example um the drinks and this is more of a surprise for james too but like the drinks uh we're hiring a, a mixologist to literally create special drinks that you will only see in this event with their own name and these names are going to be identities that when you order it, you're able to put that identity within yourself. That's how intentional it's about to get in this event. This is not about just grabbing a beer or grabbing an old fashioned. This is about ordering a millionaire or I can't I can't tell you the rest. But, you know, what we're going to have the mixologist design that for us because every little part of the event from the moment you sign up to the moment you get in the door to the moment that you leave is going to be all engineered to give you the transformation that you need to get your business to where you want it so much so like one of the things talking about intentionality <clears throat> when we were planning the event you you mentioned something angel like we need to have a theme every time we get together or have a statement every time we get together like we talked about okay breaking bread we break bread at lunch why why do we call it breaking bread because that's where fellowship that's where relationships historically throughout human kind have been created right so we break bread when we go to lunch we we gather we we have community things like that matter and it's the small details in your life that matter and not only are we bringing big details like let's say these awesome keynote speakers but the small details i believe ultimately is going to wrap everything up and create an experience that's going to be unique especially for the commercial cleaning cleaning um, industry. I can't wait, man. I can't wait for it to be September 12th. I know. I'm super excited. So make sure that if you listen to this, get your tickets, commit, make a commitment, make a decision, kill. Like, again, the meaning of decision is to kill something off, kill off that side of you. That's been making excuses that says they're going to do it. And they don't that find the reason we had Regina and Juan last time say that they literally celebrated their, their 10 year wedding, or I don't know, that's not 10. They've been married longer, but they they celebrating their wedding anniversary there. He wanted to take her out, travel. She's like, nope, that's commitment, right? He's like, we're going to go there, right? All the people that already have their tickets, commitment. Get your tickets. Talk to us. Let's make it happen. I promise you. I got it. That's, that's why you have a money back guarantee because if you go and you're like, Angel, this was not the best event I've gone to this year. And this is why. No questions asked. I'll give you back your money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wire right there and then. We won't even make it weird for you. <laughs> I mean, listen, at, at the end of the day, if you don't win, we don't win. <clears throat> and the people leaving this event, if you don't feel like you have a statement and you don't feel like you have some juice going into your team, going back to your family, going back to your business, then the mission wasn't accomplished from our end. And we will own that. Um, I had a mentor literally ask me one question one time that like literally knocked the wind out of me. I was talking about uh, a business endeavor at the time. And he said, well, James, are you interested or are you committed? There's a big difference. And I was really interested in doing a lot of things in business. Everyone's interested. It's easy to be interested, right? But was I committed was a different story. And when he asked me that, it knocked the wind out of me, not physically, but just like internally because he was right. I was interested and I wasn't ready to commit, but that question alone got me to commit, take action because I knew deep down I had to. So I guess I'll ask the same thing to anyone listening right now. If you're serious about making a statement in, in your life and you're serious about growth in all avenues and you believe that there's more out there for you, are you interested or are you committed to taking the action that needs to be taken to see the success. Again, we okay. can't ever way, have success outgrow us. I, I'll say this, um, and this happened with, with me and my wife, right? I think I said something about like, yeah, I'm just going to wake up early tomorrow or I'm going to something. I think it was like an app that I got that doesn't let me be on social media. And her word was sure. And I was like, <laughs> I just say sure like that. Uh, and then she's like, yeah, because you always say you're going to do it. But I mean, sure. And I was like, oh, my God, like it hit me there. I was like, I, her, I've been making a statement to her again. And I'm 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 pretty disciplined. But I just realized like her, the statement I was making to her is that, sure, you say you're going to do it, but you don't actually follow through. Sure, you say you're going to do date night, but you never actually plan it. You never follow through with it. 
right? So you want to do a cool activity? Grab a piece of paper, go to the people that hang out with you and be like, what do you think about me when it comes to discipline? When it comes to, we all say we're hustlers. Go ask your wife if you're really a hustler. Go ask your business partner if you're a true hustler. Go ask your employees if you're a true leader. You'll be surprised at the statement that you've been making everywhere that you don't realize, right? that you don't realize that you're making. Making a statement on social media, you'll find some people that will be like, no, nope, this is what I think of you, even though they don't know you. That's, those are valuable points. One of my mentors always said, like, dude, if you ask all your close ones what they think of you, they're going to tell a good stuff. Go, tell every, go ask everybody else, and then, you'll, and then let's see what actual narrative you're controlling. Let's see what story you're actually telling to the people out there. So just ask yourself, you want to do it? Say what statement you want to make in all areas of your life. Go ask the people close to you what actual statement you're making on all those areas of your life. Watch that big gap and that ego hit that's going to take place because I've done it and it hurts. And we've done it with employees. I've done it with my wife. I've done it with James. James and I have sat down and we're like, this is who I think I am. What do you think? This is what I think I want. What do you think? And, and there's gaps every single time that we've done it. So do it. And if you look at that gap and you go, damn, I want to fix it. You get your ticket, but you get it fast and you get that VIP, nine spots left. Make it happen. All right. See you guys next time. And super excited. Stay, stay tuned. Get your ticket. If you have questions, hit up Andrea, Andrea at profit at the profitable clean. Is it Andrea at profitablecleaner.com? That's right. And we'll we'll be, link it below. Be your brand experience manager and we'll she'll take care of you guys and anything that you need. Super excited. Let's make it happen.